Today we're going to be making a beautiful urban sketching scene. This scene may look complicated, but actually when we break it down, when we start with our thumbnails, we focus on the value, suddenly we can get that balance of ink and watercolour just right. This is a video great for beginners and intermediates because we're going to be looking at how we take something which looks scary with awkward perspective, we break that down step by step, working our way through, and all the considerations and thought processes which go with that. In no time, you'll have loads of confidence to go and approach, not just this scene, but any scene that you fancy. If you want to join in with this, the reference is linked down below. We are going to use some really simple supplies to capture a complex scene, but make it easy, make it effortless, make it approachable. By the end of today, you will have loads of ideas how to approach basically any scene. All we're using today, I've got a fine liner, 0.3 millimeters, little set of watercolors, a couple of brushes, one flat, one round, um, and that's it. My paper is some cold pressed watercolor paper, and the reference is here, which you can also find linked down below. So the scene is from St. Neots, and the first thing you'll notice is the reference is challenging, awkward perspective, because I'm stood on a bridge, um, and there's lots going on. My first tip is, how much on the very left and the very right is interesting? Not much. So what we'll do is we'll zoom in our view and instantly, instantly things become a little bit more interesting, a little easier to imagine. The next thing we're going to do before we start our actual sketch is just have a go at thumbnailing. So on one side of my page, I'm going to be exploring my scene and techniques and on the other, we'll be doing the finished image. Now our thumbnail lets us have a little go at the shapes in there. So we've got this kind of rising uh, feel to the roof, a couple of interesting chimneys. They feel important as I sketch them here. We can also look at where's the horizon line in our scene. And actually it looks to me like the flat line might just be across the middle of the house, just below these windows. And that's because I'm stood on a bridge. I'm not on the ground. So a horizon line changes and everything below that sort of angles down a bit. So that's gonna be important for getting the feel of the perspective, right? And going back, it's even more important as we try and trace back how this fits. And again, actually, where's the flat line? Maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe the flat line is actually a little higher. And this is why we thumbnail, so we can get these things wrong and then sort of come back and correct them. This building feels taller, but again, if we look, it actually should be level with up there. So you can see this is my sort of problem solving as I go. And this is the kind of thing I normally do if I'm outside, out and about, and I get a lot wrong, and that's fine. I've got the van as well, so you can kind of block that in and see if that feels important. And then everything's got this kind of flow. So we've got these flowing lines coming round, and then we break up that flow by having some vertical lines, which shows us kind of a bit more about what's going on. And this, this is a mess, isn't it? But that's fine. So we get to do it again. And the time we do it again, hopefully it will make a whole load more sense. This time I'm going to keep it simple. But I'm going to start where we started before. So we got our roof. This time we'll say that this is the flat line. This is the horizon line. I think that's a bit of a simplification, but I think simplifying is okay. The horizon line is where our eyes are. So I'm stood on a bridge. So I'm on, on a bridge like this and I'm kind of looking at the scene here. So our horizon line is coming across like this. That means that we can see that this building, we kind of have a slight upward slope, it's a little bit above, but the, the roof is much narrower, so the peak of the roof is a similar height. This comes down and all of these angles need to be sloping down. There's a vanishing point somewhere up here. So you can see now we can start building in our perspective and that means we can find accurately things like where the curve of this canal goes. So that will be coming around like, so give or take. Then we got the other curve of the canal, which actually gets broken up by all these trees. These sort of bushes are useful because they hide the perspective. They mean it's less challenging. And there we go. So now we have thumbnailed our way to finding this scene and finding the sort of key parts of it. We can then work out little last little touches. We've got these buildings in the background, which seem fun to add in, little trees and things we can add in there. And of course, another tree over here. 
the next thing I'm going to do with my thumbnail is a little bit of value. So value is the idea of going from light to dark. So we can hatch our value, do this very quickly, very roughly. And as you get from light to dark, your hatching increases. And it's a really quick, easy way of displaying shadow. So in this scene, we can find in our thumbnail a little sort of reference for later for our values. So we've got definite darkness here, definite darkness here and here and here. This is really dark. So these greenery coming in is one of the darkest elements. So we'll double hatch that. And then there's also random blobs of dark in the river. But before you know it, this is now a fairly good representation of the scene. It's gone from wobbly and challenging through to just through simple analysis of what's going on in our scene to something quite useful. And now we can take that principle over to here. And what I'm going to do is remember this, but not copy it, not over focus on it. And if things go a bit wrong, that's OK. That'll be more learning points. Again, I like starting with this building. This feels like the important building, the one on the right. So I'm going to remember that this I identified as probably the horizon line. And then we can come around and start adding in a few more of these sort of details. And I want to keep this super, super simple, really easy, really simple, because by keeping it simple, we leave ourselves flexible about adding more detail or spending less time or all sorts of other benefits, really. Got the roof, it's got a nice peak. I probably didn't get enough of the roof in here. So that's another learning point from our thumbnail. And we come over, we got this big chimney. I really like these chimneys. They've got this sort of quite a grand um, feel to them, don't they? Just adding a lot to this simple scene. And then we can't actually see much of the other side of the house. We can see the bottom, but I'm leaving that until I've sorted the perspective from adding this house in. So this house has got a flat line, but the roof, the, the sort of underside of the roof is just above it, probably going along like so. And then the top of the roof is rather narrow up here. Get those chimneys in and then get the next chimney in. And when we've got these two roofs in, we can start going like, where would our sort of, uh, where's our uh, vanishing point going to be? And it's probably going to be somewhere along here, isn't it? By the time we sketch out all these lines, so that means we can just come around and go right the bottom of the house must be about here and there we go and we just add in simple ideas for these windows the doors and hopefully by just working things through we are identifying a little more accurately the kind of perspective through this awkward scene let's then extend that so this will be the bottom of this house Again, you can't really see much, can you? So let's not pretend we can see a whole lot. Simple windows going forward. And then the simple angles for this. I'm going to leave out the van. I don't think the van's important. So we'll invent some stuff to fill in that van space. And going back, we've got a few sort of overlapping shapes, triangles, rectangles, little rectangles underneath, which of course are the windows. And there we go. That's our bulk of our scene done. Now I'm going to map in these dark areas next because they're going to frame everything and they're a bit looser. They don't really matter if we get them a bit right or a bit wrong compared to what's going on because the greenery, they could be anything. Unlike buildings, which sometimes just won't make sense if you get them a little wrong with greenery, you know what? It could have grown over like however we edit in so we can move it far more easily. And that lets us, like I said, lets us cheat, lets us frame our scene a little more. Might even cheat a bit more. Add another patch of greenery there. And that means we can just sort of suggest some roofs going off to this side. And that easily lets us fill in the gaps without actually having to get it right. Then, remember we got our, our vanishing point somewhere about there. And we can bring our curves around. And I perhaps underdone that curve because it kinks. I hadn't noticed the kink, but that's fine. So we'll then just change it, change that. And that is now the wall. So if we just come and give it some little vertical marks to show that that's the wall coming forward, where it changes direction, just going to need a bit more of a clear mark. Keep those vertical lines to show the real angle of what's going on. And again, there's some little patches of greenery. So we can just loop those in and that covers handily covers some of the awkwardness of this perspective. Next, we've got a railing, which again, just fits those angles of perspective. 
and is going to come with its own little vertical marks. This time a little bolder, a little bit more regular because this is actually showing a kind of structure that exists. It's not just an invented sort of facet of our mind and not just a structural mechanism of our sketch. And then what have we got? We've got ripples and things in the water. Let's get mapping those dark areas that we found earlier, the little shadows coming across, and maybe even do some little lilies and things, just little textures. It's far from a flat river, is it? It's got loads of texture going on. And we're almost there. Just want to add in a few more of these little details because this shows us that this is a three-story building. If we just get those windows in, and that shows why it feels taller than this one because the perspective is about right. But it feels odd um, until you identify this has got an extra sort of story in it. Here, I think we've got enough detail going into these buildings. Maybe just get a little bit of chaos back there. And then we said, here's another nice bit of cheating greenery, just to come and frame off this bit of the scene. And now we can finish off. So behind here emerges the bottom of the house, something like that. And there's actually a little wall here, isn't there, which can just flow down the scene as well. And that's it. That's our first step of our rather complicated scene done. And we just worked it through from simple, tiny little thumbnails to a rather more complicated but still very achievable drawing. I'm going to take clues from here and actually I think we'll add some hatching before we put our pen down. We'll add some hatching, just simple light vertical hatching. And if you're just starting with hatching, what I'd encourage, the rule I'd encourage you to follow is keep the hatching the same direction as the surface. So all of this is a vertical surface. So where there's a bit of shadow, I'll hatch it vertically, same on the chimney, same here. This is not a vertical surface, this goes like this. So when I add this shadow from the chimney, I'll hatch in that direction. Because what we're doing now is we're applying shadow, but we're also informing about the structure. If we start changing the direction of our hatching in different ways, we end up confusing the structure a little bit. We end up, you know, making it more difficult to view. Whereas if all the lines are here, if our river hatching is all horizontal, then that shows us that this is a horizontal surface. It's as simple as that. And if we keep that principle in mind, we'll find our hatching really just makes sense. Now, with an ink heavy sketch like this, comes some opportunity for really light colors. Oh, and there's always something to add, isn't there? There's always something to add. Let's just get this lovely tree in the background. Again, it's distance. I'm going to try and be really gentle. It doesn't have to be a complete shape. There we go. As I said, there's always something to add. Anyway, with an ink heavy sketch like this comes the opportunity for really light, loose and playful colors. So I'm going to start with some copious, silly splashing. I'm going to actually use a couple of colors. I've got a bit of cobalt blue there and then a little bit of lavender, which is a semi-opaque blue I've started playing with recently and a little bit of turquoise, cobalt turquoise. Now we can just join some of that together. And what I want is a really transparent light sky. Look at that sky, look how it gets densely blue as it goes up. But as you're looking to the different distance, it's pale. It's almost sort of yellow or beige even. A little bit of just joining together here. And that gives us this fading effect. We can come and touch in some of our richer blues just to give that upper part of the sky a little bit more interest so splash 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 and there we go now to get some of these shadows going i'm just going to link i call this a water bridge and i don't know if it's a a real thing or not but it's something i really enjoy doing joining my sky through a shadowy part of the scene and that means we get this simplicity and continuity to everything that's going on so i'm just using those same blues the lavender the cobalt blue to start joining up aspects of the scene. Down in the front, we can start adding something just a bit more neutral. So this is actually just literally a mix of various things in my palette. And I could see that it was about the kind of neutral browny purple tone I wanted. And so I thought, I'll just go for that. I'll just add that in. We don't have to uh, be clever with our mixing. We can literally just go with what appears on our palette. Same up here. Look at these various reds I've been using for other sketches. So look, I'll just use one of that more murky reds to come round and get, and get that wall. And then I can use a bit of this brighter red. That looks like a pure bit of Scarlet Lake, probably. 
nice primary red and that can add a bit of variety. But lastly, let's get some greens in this flowing wash. We'll just splash some greens in a little similar to what we did up in the sky. And you see how this, this whole river is green. Well, I'm gonna let the greens and the reds blend together because green and red will neutralize. That means instead of getting green and red, what we'll get is green, red, and some sort of more neutral, darker colors. And there is very little blue in this river. So we don't really, well, if there's any blue actually at all in this river, there's, I don't think there is, is there? So what I will do, instead of adding blue is I'll add a indigo, which is sort of a blue, but it's really that dark color, which hopefully we can just use to amp up the sort of neutrality of some of these hopefully shadowy areas. And what we're doing is just really lightly washing this scene over. Now, I talked at the beginning about how I was paying attention to the fact this was ink heavy. So the more ink I add to a scene, the less watercolor I find is possible to add in without it just getting murky. So what I want to do is really have a focused idea for what my colors are gonna be. Really gently just allow them to flow. And then that means that with our first wash of color, we aren't gonna overdo things. We're gonna leave lots of negative space. And we may even not do very much at all on our second wash of color. We can just pick out a few little bits. I am gonna just cover a tiny bit more of the negative space. Just this house feels like I should separate it from this one. And the same back here, I just wanna show that we've got a really bright white house in the foreground there. And with that, I think this little very loose wash of color is pretty much done. So I've let this dry now. And what that means is we can come back with our second wash of color. And this time, because we talked about the amount of ink, we're gonna be really specific. And to be specific, I'm using a flat brush. A flat brush has less of a water holding capacity. So what happens when we put it on is it leaves you more of these sort of marks. You can see how the paint has been applied. That is a benefit and also a challenge. If we do too much of this, especially too early, we end up with a really busy scene. But if we time it right and we just use it, for example, if we start just building in some rich greens into down here and into here, we just use it for specific touches. If we think about every stroke and we focus on this painterly effect, this idea of showing how the art was created, we can create this kind of fun little patchwork idea. And that lets us be artists, it lets us make decisions. What I want to try and do is keep some of these strokes kind of in perspective. And I also want to just separate out different planes. So by applying this little shadow along there and giving it a little bit of perspective in how it comes out, a bit like the hatching, hopefully we're separating out our different planes. Same here, just a few little dollops of red. Hopefully again, just to show the kind of structure, the kind of idea of what's going on here. A couple of more ruddy reds down the bottom. Again, trying to keep the feel, the structure. I think we'd benefit from a little more on the shadows perhaps. So we can come in again and just apply some very simple shadows. You can see I've gone over the line there a little. That's okay. Just soften it out with some water. What we can even do, take the same orange I was using, a bit of Cronacrylone and Sienna, and let that, those two colors link whilst also increasing the shadow under here. So we kind of got a dual purpose going on to our, our colors, increasing the painterly feel, increasing the tone, adding a little bit of structure, um, and of course, just exploring and having a bit of fun. Gonna get a few more of our blues just for some of these shadows as well, really gently increasing their value and allowing them to be picked out as two different planes, two different parts of the scene. We might want to find some fun specific touches. So look, these doors are turquoise. So let's give them a little turquoise punch. With that bold turquoise, we kind of need it to reflect somewhere else. Otherwise it's just too much, too strong. So just, I like to then just touch in those same colors in a couple of other places. Not quite randomly, but um, in keeping with the painting rather than what's really going on. Same back here, we've got a couple of lovely red doors. So give them a nice red touch. And the other thing which can be rather nice, I think, is um, giving windows just a little darkness. So tiny little touch of tone. And we're not gonna do, I think, much more than this in this stage. This is the sort of bold colors. We can always add a bit more later 
So we've got two more stages to go. So I'm going to let this dry and then add a bit more ink and then our finishing touches. So I call this step restructuring and what I'm going to do is come back with my ink. And where we've lost some of those lines, they've gone a bit faded, we're just going to go over them, keeping them in the front and bringing out the key parts of our scene. Notice how that bold line, it can do a few things. So number one, it pushes an object forward. So suddenly this house, for me, feels like it's come to the front of the scene. That's great. What we don't want it to do is overtake, for example, this house. So now this house becomes even bolder. Also a nice bold line under here will emphasize the shadow. And we can do the same, for example, with our chimneys. Bold lines on the shadowy side will emphasize that shadow. So not only are we restructuring, we're also finding key shadows and just enhancing them. One thing we're going to do as well is respond to the colour. So notice how these blues, they don't fit my shapes until I redo my shapes. I can redo them cheekily to fit around the blues and it makes it look more joined up as a piece of art. We don't need to emphasise the bottom of the houses so much. Some of these reds might be nice. If we go around them, we just join things up. Here, this, this feels more important than I've let it be so far. This railing, it kind of tells the story of what's going on. So I'm just going to redo it. And again, just we can correct slightly. The perspective felt a little bit off and I've slightly corrected it. At least for my mind, it now looks a bit better. Here we've got quite a bold row of bricks. I'm actually going to go over a bold line and another one underneath it just to show that we've got like a, let's call it a key row of bricks. Then again, we can get the perspective feeling a little better just by coming in loosely and just adding in lines which are definitely vertical. Coming around some of these little patches of green we added. And again, make these lines here. As soon as there's a vertical line, that just tells your eye, tells the viewer what's going on here. It tells them that this has changed angle. You've not just got a wonky wall, it's changed angle and you've explained the perspective into the river. You don't need to do too much, just some little extra bits of hatching might be fun. Again, these little bits, keeping them really horizontal, just again, they show we've changed plane. We can use some of these watercolour marks to create a little bit more hatching around as well. A little bit of these lily marks on our brighter bits of, of uh, green there. And lastly, I think last of all, it's just going to be to really emphasize these kind of frames we added and we might touch some color in this is a quite personal thing some people will love these um totally as they are nice and bold negative spaces i think it's really important to leave confident bold negative spaces when we're sketching it really just helps emphasize contrast some of you won't want to do that you'll want to paint them i would caution against painting them entirely but let's have a look at what we can do in the final step. So as soon as I've done this, we'll be moving on to the final step, which is appropriately called the final touches. I'm going to do one other bit. I'm going to need to show we are dealing with different planes of green on this side by hatching. Again, that hatching just pulls apart these different bits. So final touches. I keep promising them and we're finally, finally there. What can we do? Well, in this river, we can just do a few light splashes. And those light splashes are also what we can do into the greenery, if you want, just little touches. Where we've got different planes of greenery, this is where you could also just introduce shadow. So you could, instead of painting them and making them a complex thing, you could just make them a, a shadowed structure. And maybe even, having done that, you touch a bit of green into that shadow and it becomes a soft blending shadow. Now, a favourite thing of mine, I feel like I've not been doing it much recently, favourite thing of mine though, little red chimneys, even though they're not red, it, it kind of something which I like putting into my art. It unifies my art, it's something which adds to my, bit of my sort of cheeky fun as I as I sketch, I'm just like, yeah, this chimney's red, even though it's not, it's going to be red today. I said the windows being dark can be quite a nice touch, and so we can just darken a few of them with a, a third, or well, second layer actually, isn't it, second layer of colour. Just little touches into each of those windows. Maybe a little bit more shadow just here onto that road. And then basically we need to step away. We need to step away and go, this is already quite a good sketch. So let's not ruin it. We can come back another day if we want. Most important, sign it, be proud, own it. 
Um, even if it's not gone well everywhere, and this hasn't gone well everywhere, there are still some things you will love and some things you can learn from. If you enjoy this kind of sketching, this kind of teaching, subscribe, check out the videos in the description below. You'll find tons of other ideas which you can sketch along with, join in with, and have fun with. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.